ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋಹನಕ್ತ ಸಹವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವ ವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯಂ ಕರುಣಾಲ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವಂ ಬಾಲರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತೌ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತೌ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇದಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿಣೆ ವ್ಯೋಮವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಗುಕಾರಸ್ತ್ವಂಧಕಾರಸ್ತಕ ಅಂಧಕಾರ ನಿರೋಧಿತ್ವಾದ ಗುರುರಿತ್ಯಭೀಯತೆ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರ and the first words <coughs> arjuna uvacha sanyasasya mahabaho tatva michhami veditam tyagasya charushi kesha ಪೃಥಕ್ಕೇಶಿ ನಿಷೂದನ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವಾನುವಾಚ ಕಾಮ್ಯಾಕರ್ಮಣಸಂಕವಯೋ ವಿದು ಸರ್ವಕರ್ಮಫಲತ್ಯಾಗ ಕರ್ಮಣಾಮ್ಯಾಸಂಶನ್ ಕಾಮ್ಯಕರ್ಮ yesterday we talk of several kinds of karma but let's say that all the actions that we perform can be broadly divided in two categories actions that are performed in the spirit of duty and actions that are performed to gain some material reward <coughs> so these are the, you can say these two actions are there those actions performed in the, in the sense of duty are called nitya naimitika karma the daily and incidental obligatory duties obligatory duties you can call them religious duties so religious act duties and secular actions this is how this is the way also that our actions can be divided <coughs> now you say it also when krishna when lord krishna answers arjuna's question and talks about sanyas or renunciation surely it is not the renunciation of the highest nature where one is spontaneously renunciated by virtue of knowledge what we call vidvat sanyasa or jivan mukta a one liberated in living while living which is the goal and it is not that renunciate that is talked about or even the renunciate the one who has renounced all the actions and now dedicated one's life just to the pursuit of knowledge and the exclusion of every other pursuit that is what we call vividisha sanyasi one who has renounced all the duties all the connections all the claims from the world and now purely devoted to the pursuit of knowledge so there is another kind of renunciate that is also not referred to here but the first kind of renunciate the one 
who is performing his duties <coughs> and in the spirit of renunciation of the rewards that come by performance of duties. So karma yogi, so one who is performing actions in the spirit of offering. So that karma yogi is being referred to here as a sannyasi. So in fact it is called gauna sannyasi. Gauna means in a secondary sense, in a figurative sense is called a sannyasi, not in a primary sense. But Lord Krishna seems to like him a lot because even though he does not appear to be a sannyasi, in the spirit he is a renunciate. He is a renunciate to be, he is to be renunciate. And so, surely when one lives the life of karma yoga, the life of, you know, performing karma actions in the spirit of offering, surely he will become a renunciate, a true renunciate in course of time. Or the one who is true renunciate today must have been a karma yoga in the past. And the one who is a karma yoga today will become in course of time a true renunciate. And thus replying Arjuna's question, Lord Krishna said, some wise people say that renunciation of all the desire prompted actions <coughs> is called sannyasa. Other learned people say that the renunciation of the fruits of all the actions is called tyaga. Yesterday we explained that what's the difference between the two definitions is as you said if all the actions are divided as religious actions and the secular actions then the first opinion is that only religious actions should be performed all secular actions should be given up all desire prompted actions should be given up meaning that the desire prompted actions do not have a play, a play the actions that are conventionally desire prompted conventionally bring reward like doing a business and working and things like that so which we know are going to actually bring a material reward so there are those thinkers who believe that those kinds of actions cannot become means of spiritual progress therefore give them up and do only those actions which are performed in the spirit of duty there are other thinkers who think however that no action is an action by action by, by nature an action is neither selfish or selfless it is a spirit which an action is performed that is what makes an action either selfish or selfless and therefore rather than saying that give up all the selfish uh, selfish actions they say that perform any action that is necessary with an attitude of selflessness that means according to the second definition any action can become a means of spiritual progress. According to first definition, only nitya, only enjoined actions, actions that are religious duties, they alone can become a means of spiritual growth. According to second definition, any action where it is performed in the spirit of offering can become the means of spiritual growth. The idea is that it is not the action as such, it is the spirit with which the action is performed. It is a spirit that is really which is the means of growth. Not an action just becomes an occasion to be able to uh, invoke that spirit from myself, invoke the attitude from myself, the attitude of offering or attitude of selflessness. <coughs> so when people say that Swamiji, what do I need Gita for? I am a good person. I don't hurt anybody. I always tell the truth. So uh, I don't hurt anybody is, is good. I am a, a non-violent person. But we would like you not only not to hurt others, we would like you in fact to help others. So not hurting also is good, he is a dharmic person. But helping others is a spiritual person. So this is what is meant. See Bhagavad Gita talks about that. Yajnyasat karma nyatra lokoyam karma bandhanaha. Here Juna in action, perform in the spirit, other than the spirit of offering is an action that binds you. Therefore, may you perform your actions. No, Lord Krishna does not distinguish between the religious actions and secular actions. Lord Krishna seems to think that any action is fine as long as it is performed with a spirit of offering. <coughs> That's how Lord Krishna gives the very broad meaning of the term yajna, which in the Vedic times so were restricted to merely the enjoying rituals or duties or enjoying, you know, those fire sacrificial rituals. Lord Krishna gives a very broad meaning and says that the spirit that is involved in performs those rituals, the same spirit of offering or worship can be brought into any day-to-day -day activity and therefore a prayerful action, an action performed in the spirit of worship, 
an action performed with humility, an action performed with an awareness of the benefits that I have been gaining and therefore an awareness that, awareness and therefore a sense of gratitude that arises, all these actions become. So it is this spirit of gratitude, offering, being useful, it is that spirit which is really a spirit required for one to grow. It doesn't matter what action is performed, one can perform any action according to the second definition. So there is a slight technical difference, this is this kind of discussions are there in this in the scriptures. <coughs> okay, so this is the definition given of sannyasa and tyaga. Really, these are not two terribly different things, they are the same thing. Basically, sannyasa means renunciation, tyaga also means renunciation, and Bhagavad Gita recognizes renunciation as the spirit for the inner growth. And as we said, the Vedas look upon the life of human being as necessarily a process of spiritual growth. Material growth is not important. The spiritual growth is important. And material growth can come in the wake of the spiritual growth. That's okay. But the human being's primary commitment in life should be inner growth, self-growth or spiritual growth. And for that, the spirit of renunciation is the very means. Tyagenaike amrutatpavanasuhu which end at verse every evening. Na karmana na prajayadhanena tyagenaike amrutatpavanasuhu It is not by karma, not by praja, not by dhana. That is not by progeny, not by wealth, not by rituals. That people attain the highest tyagena. It is by renunciation. Meaning that in the wealth, or in the rituals, or in progeny, if you have a spirit of renunciation, it is not merely in the ritual, but the spirit of renunciation which is there and performs the ritual, so that is what becomes a means of amrutatvam, immortality. <coughs> now Lord Krishna wants to elaborate that. And Lord Krishna is more interested in how to bring about the spirit of renunciation in the day-to-day life, in the working person's life. Doesn't seem to be a very sympathetic or very favorable idea of giving of action, really, you know. Lord Krishna doesn't seem to be much, you know, very enthusiastic about somebody giving of action. He thinks that continue to perform action, continue to contribute, be a useful person, participate, don't drop out, don't withdraw. <coughs> that doesn't mean that one should never withdraw, the time always comes when the participation can run in a different way. So spirit of participation in the first phase is by way of doing things. In the spirit of participation in the second phase is by way of knowing things. There is also a spirit of participation. So some people who are very rigid in believing that karma means only what is done at the physical level. That rigidity is not accepted by the scriptures. That participation or contribution can be there even at the level of knowing, at the level of thinking or knowing also you can contribute or participate. <coughs> now Lord Krishna wants to answer the second question. Tattva vichyama vedutum sanyasasya tyagasya acha. I want to know what is the truth of the sanyasa. So I want to know the nature of sanyasa, nature of renunciation. What should renunciation mean? <coughs> And in order to explain that, Lord Krishna first starts with what we call Puro Paksha. Puro Paksha means the opinion of the opponent. What is to be refuted? So in the third verse, in the first line, Lord Krishna presents the opinion of those which requires to be refuted. Because those people also are, are great thinkers. And they may have large following, who knows, and therefore, People are likely to be influenced by those opinions and therefore Lord Krishna states the opinions of those people and shows and tells how that is not right. <coughs> so let us go to the third verse. Tyajyam doshavadityeke Tyajyam doshavadityeke Karma prahurmanishinaha Karma prahurmanishinaha Yajnidana tapah karma, yajnidana tapah karma, natya jamiti chapare, natya jamiti chapare. Eke manishinaha prahuhu, again quoting 
some wise men, some wise people, quoting them. Prahu, Prahu, they say that karma tyajyam, the action is to be given up. Doshavat, so karma which is beset with evil. So there is an opinion of some people that some of them are the Sankhyas, you know, Sankhyas are one of them. The followers of the Sankhya school of thought. They are one of those believers, those who think in this way, that every action is beset with an evil. Every action involves some violence. You will perform a ritual, such as a fire ritual, you make offering in the fire, you make offering of food, etc. Let alone the offering of an animal, that is no question that it is violence. But even when you offer things such as food, that also is violence. And thus they say that even the so-called religious actions, which involve making an offering to fire, etc., all of these involve violence. Therefore, all of them are beset with evil. Doshavat. Doshavat means, so, dosha asyastiri, the one that is possessed of dosha, a defect or evil. So they say that every action is beset, every, beset with evil, every action involves violence, and therefore a spiritual seeker should give up action per se. Renounce all the action, become a renunciate. Then alone you can lead a life of non-violence. As long as you are working, and as long as you are doing things, some violence or the other will be involved, some hurt will be involved regardless of what you do. It is true also. Regardless of what we do. Regardless of how good we are, and regardless of how uh, the, the spirit of helping is there, and still, regardless of what you do, I'm sure that somebody will be hurt. In some way, some hurt will be inflicted. Even if the doctor also performs the surgery with the best intention, but at least he has to perform surgery, he has to remove something. If you, if you administer medicine to this person, it is going to kill the, the bacteria which are creating disease. We will also kill other things in the body. And similarly also, even when you tell somebody, praise somebody, you know, then also if somebody is not praised, you know. So one evening it happened here, we were chanting in this arati. One of the girls, you know, uh, I didn't know her, but I, I, I complimented her, hey, oh, you are chanting so well. Where did you learn? And so on and so forth. And she told me she had been coming here and in summers and so on. It just happened there was another girl also who also was chanting. And uh, I did not hear because she may have been a little away from me. And therefore while I was complimenting this girl, the other girl felt rejected or the ignored, you know, that Swamiji did not compliment me. Maybe I am not chanting well. And then all kinds of things happened in the mind of that person. Later on she told me and I came to know, I said, no, that was no intention at all. But you may not have intention of hurting somebody. And still, people may, may you know, infer your own intention, your intention. That is how you may wind up hurting somebody anyway. And so, any, so Swamiji, today's class was so good, you know. Now, sometimes that hurts me more than it helps me because that means what about other classes, you know, other day's classes. So, when you say at home, you know, oh, the food is so good, <laughs> it's really the other day, you know. This man always fighting with his wife, you know, on, on this, every day when he sits for meals, he always tells her, you know, you don't know how to cook, you don't know this, and you don't know that, and all this to my life. Never said it, always grumbling. And one day, the food was so good, the man was so happy, and then also he got angry. He says, if you can cook so well, how come you not been cooking like this, you know. <laughs> and that is how, if you, if, if you want to be unhappy, you can be unhappy anyway, regardless of what you do. People will become unhappy regardless of what you do. And I am sure everybody has that experience. And therefore, and Lord Krishna is going to acknowledge this also. Sahajam karma kaunte sadosha vinatyajet Hey Arjuna, hey kaunte The karma, the action, duty that comes to, to your share, even if it is defective, you should not give it up. Sarvaram mahe dosha dhumi nagnari vavataha the just as smoke in some measure is always associated with fire. When there is fire, some smoke is going to be there even if you don't see it. And similarly also, some defect will be there 
or some blemish will be there in every action whether it is evident to us or not. We would accept this, that some violence is always there. We cannot live a totally non-violent life. We can have the spirit of non-violence, but then at physical level we can never be totally non-violent. Even if you are vegetarians also, some violence is involved. Swamiji, vegetarian also violent, non-vegetarian also violent, what's the difference? There's a lot of difference, no doubt. That you can minimize violence, of course. And therefore eating vegetarian food means minimizing violence. Eating meat is, is, is unnecessary violence and a lot of violence, so that's okay. But even then, even if you are a vegetarian, and even if you eat the minimum, you, what we can do is to minimize the violence. We can make our life as simple as we can. We can make our requirement as few as we can, which we should do. That's also part of the, you know, that's also a part of the spiritual pursuit, a spiritual value. That I, my life should be as simple as possible. My needs must be as few as possible. I should be as little a burden on the world as possible. I should draw from the nature's resources as little as I can. That's also a value. And that also is a part of the following the value of non-violence, but still, regardless of how little you take, still you're going to take something, and there will be always somebody who is needier than you are. And therefore, somebody will be deprived on account of what you do. So some violence is going to be involved. And this is how life is. And so the Sankhya say that, whenever you perform any ritual also, even religious action, violence is always involved, therefore give up action. But then we are asking question, because it is said, akarane pratyavaya. If you fail to perform your duty, then there is also pratyavaya. Then also there is a sin, because you, you fail to do what you are required to do. So now you are, you are advising us, that give up all your duties also, because they involve violence, in some measure. But if you give up all the duties then, from what the scriptures say that, we are going to uh, incur some sin. They say that, it is better to incur the sin by not performing duty than incur the sin that occurs due to the violence while performing the duty. This is their opinion. So, doshavat, karma, karma doshavat, Every action is always beset with evil and therefore tyajyam must be discarded, renounce the karma. Or doshavat, this word can be explained explain two ways, that doshavat can be matu pratyaya, possessed of dosha or evil, or doshavat can be in comparison evil, like dosha. So just as raga dvesha, which are the evils which you must discard, and so also you must discard the karma. This is their opinion. In A.K. Manishina Prahuhu, he Arjuna, some thinkers. So, some wise people, not wise people, some thinkers, they, this is how they think. <coughs> In India, you can find every school of thought, you know, everything you can find. I'm sure that there'll be some thinker who has, who has expounded or pro- presented some idea. <coughs> In the second line, then Lord Krishna gives the opinion of other people. Yajnidana tapah karma natyajamita cha apare. Apare manisha. The other wise people, other thinkers say, Yajnidana tapah karma natyajam. Yajni means sacrifice. You know, sacrifice means sacrificial ritual. Basically, yajni means uh, act of worship. So, all those sacrificial rituals were performed as acts of worship. In the fire, traditionally, we invoke the gods. And we make offerings. So it is not that we are making offerings of fire. Although outwardly appears, it appears as though we are throwing things in fire and burning them and wasting them. But that's not the point. The point is that in the fire, in fact, we invoke the gods. And therefore, the offering that is made to fire is really offering made to gods. Somewhere you make offering. Today you have now an altar here and there is, a, there is an image here of the Lord and that's why you are making an offering. Those days there, there was no idol worship or no worship of images or forms and then it was worship of Lord through fire which was looked upon as the closest to the Lord. The first perceptible element of the five elements, space, air, fire, water and earth, fire is the first perceptible element, the subtlest of the three that are perceptible elements or visible elements and therefore 
fire was looked upon as closest to the Lord. Therefore, you know, sir, it's called Pratyaksha Devata. Devata, Deva means Devutana Devaha. The shining ones are called the Devatas. And fire is shining or bright or brilliant. And that's the reason why the fire is looked upon as God. And also as a representative of all the gods. He is, he is also called Hutavaha. The one who carries the offerings to the Devatas. So you make, you see the smokes are there. When you make an offering in the fire, there is smoke. That smoke is going to heavens. And therefore the Lord fire takes the offerings and, and distributes to the Devatas to whom the offering is made. This is a belief anyway. So understand that the things are not thrown in fire, they are offered to God. So Yajna here stands for the any kind of rituals or any practices that are done to worship Lord. So those days it was Yajna. These days it can be anything. It can be the Abhishek, Rudra Abhishek. It can be anything that we do. All of that will be in the category of Yajna. That is an act of worshipping God. <coughs> Dana. Dana means charity. That means an awareness that there are those who are needier than I am. Recognition of the fact that there are people who are needy. Recognition of the fact that I have been, I am lucky or I am fortunate that God has gifted me various things and therefore I possess something more than what I need. No Swami, I don't even have enough for my need. But anyway, there are needier than I am. And so, I possess more than what I need and in the society there are people who are needy people and therefore it is my duty, sacred duty to help them. That, that is how dhanam or the spirit of charity comes. <coughs> really, you know, that way you can give up everything and still it will never be enough. So Mahatma Gandhi could possess nothing. He says, how can I wear even clothes? Two pairs of, pairs of clothes, upper and lower? I mean, there are people who are, who are naked and therefore he, he could only justify putting on the lower, not even the whole cloth, just half cloth, just loin cloth, that's all. How can I eat sweets? How can I have a feast? When people are starving, so he could only justify eating the millet bread and spinach, that's all he could eat. So this was his interpretation of what non-violence means. In his case, non-violence also meant that not taking more than absolutely minimum from the resources of nature because you take more than what you minimum require, you are depriving somebody who is needier than you. But anyway, so dhanam is reaching out, an action of reaching out. And dhanam need not only mean the money, which is of course the principal way of helping people, but in any other way. Whatever it is that God has given me, it is possible that I may not be, you know, I may not be fortunate enough to possess a lot of money, then I may have something else. Whatever is given, some physical strain may be there, some emotional strain may be given, some intellectual strain may be given, everybody is given something. Therefore, to reach out and help. So, dhanam, the spirit of charity. <coughs> and tapaha. Tapaha is what? Austerity. So, at the level, at the personal level, austerity. A deliberate self-deprivation, I would call it, you know. What is an austerity? A deliberate self-deprivation. That I have food, but then I deliberately refrain or abstain. So abstinence, abstinence from pleasures. So this is called tapaha austerity. The fasting and you know some of the austerities are well known. Fasting is one of those austerities. <coughs> an austere way of life, austerity in food, austerity in clothes, austerity in life, austerity in everywhere. Austerity means, as we said, simplest possible life. My own requirements are minimum. I draw the minimum from the resources of nature. This is austerity. So, yajna. <coughs> so, then, apare manishan have ahuhu. Otherwise, people say <coughs> that these three should never be given up. Now, mimamsakas. The Sankhyas say that karma should not be performed at all. That's one extreme. The Mimamsaka say that the karma should never be given up. That's another extreme. Vedanta is a problem with both of them. But these are, these are people, there are these Mimamsaka who say that yajna, dana, tapaha. In fact, these three are mentioned 
but they actually represent what we call all nitya nehmitika karmas. All daily and incidental obligatory duties are all included in these three yajna, dana, tapa. <coughs> and therefore, apare, other thinkers say that these three should never be given up. <coughs> these two opinions are first presented before Arjuna. Before Lord Krishna gives his own opinion, these two prevalent opinions are presented to Arjuna. <coughs> but Lord, what is your opinion now? A.K. Manishinaha Prahu. Some wise people say that's all right. But what is your opinion? So, in order to say that again, Lord Krishna makes a proposition in the fourth verse. Nischayam Shrunume Tatra. Nischayam Shrunume Tatra. Tyage Bharata Sattama. Tyage Bharata Sattama. Tyago Hipurusha Vyagra. Tyago Hipurusha Vyagra. Trividasam Prakirti Daha. Trividasam Prakirti Daha. Tatra Tyage. With reference to this Tyaga renunciation. So interesting how Lord Krishna now uses the word Tyaga renunciation and not Sanyasa. Meaning that by that the sannyasa and tyaga are not different. I need not repeat both the words all the times. We said earlier that sannyasa means renunciation, tyaga also means renunciation. Therefore, Lord Krishna used the word tyaga. Sometimes he will use sannyasa also, meaning renunciation. So here Arjuna, with reference to renunciation, hey Bharata Sattama. So, oh, most exalted among the, the uh, lineage of Bharata family. <coughs> Me nishyam Listen to the firm conclusion that I have regarding this renunciation. <coughs> Here is the most excellent of the Bharata family. You know, Bharata Sattama. Bharata Sat, Sattara, Sattama. Sat means good. Sattara, better. Sattama, the best. And Bharata, the... Uh, the one who is born in the family of the Bharata is called Bharata Sattama, or most excellent among the, the Bharata family, lineage of Bharata. Tyago hi Purusha Vyagra. See, Lord Krishna has another address for Arjuna. Purusha Vyagra. So, tiger among men, Purusha Vyagra. Bharata Sattama, the one who is born, you know, is the most excellent in the lineage of Bharata. And Purusha Vyagra, the tiger among men. It's not, you know, a teacher addressing a student like that is not an ordinary thing. Teacher such as Lord Krishna addressing his student in such glowing, or, you know, terms. That shows, as you said, the respect that Lord Krishna has for Arjuna as well as love that he has and the humility also that he has. A person who is, you know, a great person has no difficulty in respecting other people because we have difficulty in respecting, showing respect to somebody else, but I believe that I feel that when I show respect to somebody, I am inferior to them. My respect somehow seems to go down when I respect somebody else. But the great people never think so, and therefore they have no difficulty in bowing down at all. And so, also, these two names that are used for Arjuna, they indicate something. Bharata Sattama, the most excellent among the Bharatas, that shows that Arjuna enjoys an excellent lineage. That means that he brings with him excellent samskaras or excellent uh, in heritage, you know, of the past. Because he is born in such a, in such an exalted family. And therefore, Arjuna possesses an excellence by way of the lineage. And Purusha Vyagra, the tiger among men, that shows his own prowess, shows his own strength. And therefore, Arjuna possesses excellence by his own achievement also. So the Arjuna possesses excellence in two ways. By virtue of inheriting the great samskaras because he is born in such an illustrious family. At the same time, he himself is the tiger among men and therefore a man of great prowess. That shows also his qualification that way. <coughs> so tyago hi purusha vyagra, hi purusha vyagra, tyaga trividaha samprakirtitaha. 
understand that tyaga requires to be understood. The renunciation is something that is required to be understood. What is Trividaha? It is stated to be threefold. So renunciation is stated to be threefold. <coughs> not just once, not one kind of renunciation, three kinds of renunciation. So giving away action is three kinds. Let us show what those three kinds can be. <coughs> Remember that Lord Krishna is talking about renunciation only with reference to uh, So renunciation with reference to, to uh, this they are not the renunciation of a wise person who is a spontaneously a renunciate but the renunciation of the seeker <coughs> Now for a karma yogi there are these two things. Number one, there is karma and karma phala. It is deliberately translated as a reward rather than a result. So let us distinguish between result and reward. Karma is an action, result is a reaction. So whenever I perform an action, an appropriate reaction is going to be there. So nobody can avoid the result. And thus, as we say, the example that we normally give is shooting an arrow, that I have a bow, an arrow in my hand, and I shoot a certain target, and that is called karma. And when the arrow is shot, the arrow will travel from my bow and fall at a certain place, maybe it may hit the target or not hit the target, that is the result. That's okay. Action and the result. When Lord Krishna says, give the attachment to the result, it is not that you remain indifferent to what happens to an arrow. Just throw the arrow as you like, you know, because you are indifferent to the result. Therefore, do action as you like. That's not the point. When you are shooting the arrow, make sure that you shoot the arrow so as to hit the target. That is, while performing action, it is your duty to make sure that you perform action the best way. Lord Krishna uses the expression like samachara, samyak achara, we will perform your action well. That means take the responsibility for our action. When it is said karmanyavadikarasthi, you have freedom to perform the action, that means that you have the responsibility for action. And that is that. So in fact, Lord Krishna teaches responsibility. That as a human being you have a choice of what to do, what not to do, how to do, whether to do, all choices you have. And therefore, exercise the choice wisely and thus take the responsibility for your action. And therefore, when you perform an action, it should perform to the best of your ability and with the best of the uh, intention also. So use whatever abilities you have, resources you have to perform an action which will bring about the best result. And so question Swamiji, if you are indifferent to the result of the action, does it mean that I don't care what happens as a result of my action? No. Well, I'm indifferent to the action, so I'm driving the car. I'm indifferent, so it doesn't matter at what speed I'm driving, whether somebody is hit or not, whether there's red light or not. No, that's not what is meant. That is, when you are driving the car, drive in a responsible way. Follow the rules of the road and make sure that uh, other people are safe, you're also safe and drive safely. So that is my responsibility. So whether I am an engineer, I am a doctor, I am a business, or whoever I may be. When I perform an action, I make sure that the action is done in the best way. And also, I perform the action in such a way that the desired result comes. I have a certain target, certain goal is there, and then I perform an action to meet that goal. Or better than that goal, no question about it. Lord Krishna doesn't mean to say that you become indifferent to the goal or don't take responsibility or settle with whatever comes. Not that payam will lose attitude. That's not what is Lord Krishna teaching. And so indifferent to the result does not mean, you know, in, is not indifferent to the result in terms of the reaction that comes from action. Then what is it? What is the Lord Krishna says being different to? That is why we use the word reward. You see, when I shoot an arrow, and then, if the arrow hits the target, then of course my action is successful. 
Then there is a reward. What is the reward? There is a personal reward. There is, I'm, there is a personal thing at stake there. On account of my identifying with the results, I claim that I shot the arrow and I am successful. So that is how human being identifies with the results and becomes the owner of the result also, author of the results. If the arrow does not hit the target, then I say that I failed. And this connecting myself with the result and judging myself based on the result is what is called attachment. That's all. Attaching myself to the result. Attachment is what? Attachment is something purely mental. It's purely a projection of my mind. What the reality, the physical reality is that I perform an action of shooting an arrow and the arrow fell there. And then it hit the target and did not hit the target. This is what we call the physical reality. Lord Krishna cannot make rules about the physical reality. But then, along with that, there is a subjective element involved. So a subjective element is involved while I perform the action as well as when I receive the result. When I perform the action, the subjective element involves the, the attitude with which I do, the intention which I have in performing action. That is my subjective attitude while performing action. And while receiving the result also, there is subjective attitude of my, my identifying with the result. And therefore, number one, judging the result as success and failure, that's okay. But then, judging myself as success and failure. Swami, what's wrong with that? Well, what happens is, when I judge myself the successful person, I become the author of the result. Ma karma phala hetur vuhu. Lord Krishna says, may you not become the author of the result. But then I congratulate myself. So when the arrow hits the target, I congratulate, I take the credit for that, I congratulate myself, that is what we call a gratification of the ego. So understand that while I perform action, I am seeking two things, you know. One is result, which will come by the laws of, you know, the laws of karma, by the laws of action. Other is a reward in terms of gratification. Now, gratification can be of different kinds. It can be ego gratification. It can be sense gratification. It can be emotional gratification, intellectual gratification. But then, as a result of performing action, I am also seeking a personal gratification. So this is what we have to pay attention to. Sometimes, my commitment to the result, to make sure that the result is successful, is not so much because I care for myself, because I identify with the result, and when the result is so-called successful, then I am the one who gets the credit for that, and that's how I feel my ego is satisfied. My ego is gratified. This ego gratification, is also what human being is seeking while performing every action. This is what we call the personal reward. What makes me disappointed, what makes me sad as a result of an action is not that the action did not hit the target, but that I did not hit the target. It's not the arrow did not hit the target. It is I who did not hit the target and that is what makes me sad because I judge myself as a person who is not efficient, or is not capable, who is not worthy. Even though while shooting the arrow, I was very sincere, I made the best effort, and still, rather than judging myself based on my effort, I always judge myself based on the outcome. Lord Krishna says, do not judge yourself on the basis of your outcome. If you have to judge yourself, judge yourself on the basis of the effort that you made. But in the out, the reason why I judge myself on the basis of outcome is because there is always a desire for some gratification involved in everything that I perform. Is it not so? So, this woman, you know, she, they have invited a number of guests. She has worked very hard for three days, cooking a lot of food, excellent food. People came and, you know, they, had, they ate and everything, they went away. And then she feels, she says, Swami, look at these people, you know. There's no gratitude, nobody even said one word, you know, as well the food was good, you know, and nobody even said one word of appreciation. She's disappointed. 
So while cooking food, not only I want to feed the people and I want to feed them well, at the same time, there is also an expectation of some appreciation. That's the subjective part, understand? That I'm seeking appreciation, I'm seeking gratification, I'm seeking some approval, I'm seeking some acceptance. This is always there. And therefore, what happens is this needy person that I am, my need always of being gratified, the need of being accepted, the need of being respected, the need of being praised, you know, the need, I, in fact, guess, affects every action that I perform. And that is what is called attachment to the result, understand? Not that my commitment to see that the best result comes is not an attachment. That is my responsibility. But judging myself based on results and the personal reward that I am seeking in terms of some recognition. Swami, I worked so hard, I still didn't get promotion. He's disappointed. That he worked for hard for the whole year is not a matter of pleasure for him. But that, I did not get promotion. What's the point? Lord Krishna says, identify with the process. You work hard for the whole year, enjoy the whole year. <coughs> did not get promotion? That's problem. Maybe you should change your style of work. If you, you can learn from the result, that's okay. But the personal reward, that element is so subtle and we all, we have to be very, you know, we have to be aware of that. And that is the element that gives me, that makes me sad or sorrowful. So Lord Krishna identifies one cause of sorrow, and that is called attachment. But understand what attachment means, this is attachment. Typically we help other people also. Parents help their children, raise their children, children also serve their parents. I may serve my family, my friend and so forth, I do that. But in all of those, some expectation is always involved that they will return in some way the favor will be returned. At least some good word, some recognition. He'll come for when I need. It is human to expect it, but this is what is called this is what causes in fact all the, the sadness or the sorrow is this is what causes all the sorrow in the human life. There is no reason for sorrow at all otherwise. And so, the disappointment comes because there is an appointment of this nature. I make an appointment, the result, that it should bring some recognition for me. It should bring some ego gratification, some personal gratification at the level of senses, level of emotions, level of intellect, level of ego. At some level, the gratification should come. And therefore, seeking gratification, satisfying, gratifying my ego. So this is what is called attachment. <coughs> And very often people are more committed to that than even the results. Not only that, very often I manipulate the action to make sure a certain result comes so that my ego is gratified. And therefore, a person who is committed to the result in terms of reward, for that person, the end becomes more important than the means. Like the other, for him, the end is more important. He must get kingdom by hook or crook, and therefore he will compromise the means. So Lord Krishna knows then when reward becomes important to a person, in all likelihood the quality of action is going to be compromised. And then I will not be fulfilling my responsibility of commitment that I must do the best that the situation calls for. <coughs> so this is called the attachment and therefore the karma phala. Anyway, so these three things, these two are involved, action and the result. Kind of combinations are possible. Renunciation can be of three kinds now. Three permit, three combinations are possible. That one comes action, he renounces the reward. What reward? That personal gratification. This is called karma yoga. This is one combination. Other fellow, renowned in action, but 
So he wants reward, but he renounces action. And third fellow is that who is renounced action as well as renounce the reward. This is called a wise person. So you say, the highest form of renunciation is where even the sense of doership is renounced. So the only way you can renounce action really, ideally, is by renouncing or growing out of or letting go the sense of doership. And that is only in the way you can't really give up the sense of doership. It has to go. Understand that it, at all the stages, renunciation means dropping off. If renunciation is the deliberate action that you are giving up something, it is not true renunciation. The true renunciation is that where something drops off. Therefore, the sense of doership in the wake of knowledge So the wise person is the one who in the wake of knowledge has renounced the sense of doership and before that, as a karma yogi, he had already renounced the, the attachment to the reward. So you can call attachment or you can call it demand, you know. <coughs> that means one who performs action without demanding any personal gratification, that's one. one who doesn't care to perform action, but wants all the rewards anyway. In the mind, what happens is like a child who has given up the, uh, the, uh, the marbles, playing the marbles, outwardly, but inwardly has not given up. That's the second fellow here. And third person is who has grown out from the need to play the marbles. Grown out, so these are three. Three kinds of uh, renunciations are there, and Lord Krishna is going to talk about them. <coughs> This kind of renunciation is not the subject matter right now, the renunciation of a wise person is not the subject matter right now. But the first two renunciations, wherein when a karma yogi is renunciation, where he performs action, but renounces the attachment to the reward or demand of the reward, and a, what we call the, uh, what we call the uh, non-discriminative person. In earlier Lord Krishna used the word ayok, ayukta. In ayogi, the one who is not a yogi. A yogi, a yogi, and a wise person. Three levels, these three renunciations are. So Lord Krishna says, hey Arjuna, understand that. Tyago hi purusha vyagraha, vyagraha, trividaha, samprakirtitaha. Tyago renunciation is considered to be threefold <coughs> and we will discuss this further the, as Lord Krishna himself discusses the earlier two ones. <coughs> and the second person demands, not first person, demands the demand. Right, right. Hmm. Yeah, the demand comes because he has renounced the demands. Uh, renounced the first one has renounced the demands. So some of attachment, the word attachment is not understood. Therefore we can understand the word attachment as demand, that's all. That while doing something, there is something, some, some reward, some gratification that I demand. This is uh, what we call the attachment to the result. <coughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Shankar
शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव वादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम ओ शातिशाति हरि ओ श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम